Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning or good afternoon, uh, whatever time of the day it is when you're watching us. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day. My name is Robert. Great to have you with us. And I got a question as we get started, as we look at our passage here in Matthew chapter 8, and that is, how strong is your faith in God? And maybe you've often wondered this, and maybe you wonder and evaluate it versus other people and, and asking that. Uh, but I've got a, a, maybe a, a metric based on the, the story that we're going to be looking at from Matthew that may help you kind of think about your uh, faith strength in a different way. Because I think that uh, one metric of how you may look at that is by thinking about how you ask for things in prayer and what you do in response to that prayer and that request you bring to God. Um, because I think how we ask things and how we follow up may determine our level of trust and faith that that thing may happen. As a for instance, uh, I've got two kids, I've got a five and an eight year old. Uh, and, and I'm just, as I was thinking about this passage, I was thinking about me asking my five year old daughter to do something. And I obviously I love her and, and we have a great relationship. But if I ask her to do something, most of the time I have very little confidence that that thing is going to be followed through with. She's young and she still suffers from the shiny syndrome of she sees something shiny and gets distracted. Um, and so if I ask her to do something, I know that I'm going to have to follow up and make sure it's done and maybe even ask her multiple times. But there's other people in my life that, that I can say, hey, can you do this for me? And, and I can just completely let go of that because I have a high level of faith and trust that they're going to do that if they say they're going to. So I don't have to follow up. I don't have to verify. I don't have to handhold to see if that takes place. And I think that we may be able to use this in our metric of, uh, or, or this idea of, of tasks and what our requests are to see where we're at in our faith with Jesus. And I share this because in Matthew chapter 8, uh, starting in verse 5, we see a story of a man coming to Jesus with a request. Um, and this is a very powerful story. I want to read it and let Scripture speak for itself instead of me summarizing it for you. In Matthew 8, verse 5, he says this. It says, When he had come to Capernaum, uh, a centurion came forward towards him, appealing to him. Now, a centurion's a Roman soldier, kind of a leader of about 100 soldiers. Um, so right off the bat, we've got a, a Roman not a Jewish person, but a Roman person, a Roman soldier, if, if nothing else. Already, this guy's not the, the predisposed hero of the story. Um, in, in that setting, these are the people oppressing the Jews, you know, leading the, the iron fist of Rome in the local setting. And here is the person coming to Jesus. And the centurion appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority and with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west, recline at table with Abraham, Isaac and, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. And while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, in that place will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And, the centurion, and to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done to you as you have believed. And the servant was healed in that very moment. Now, this was an incredible ask of the servant. This was something that... that Everyone watching, everyone witnessing this, and really everyone reading this in the first century would go, man, a centurion? And he had faith, and Jesus is commending a centurion, a Roman, these people who are oppressing me from this other nation. That's where Jesus found faith. But you see it, because the centurion said, you don't even need to come to my home. You don't need to lay hands. You don't need to pray. You don't need to touch. You don't need to, to wave or make any motions over my servant. You just need to say the words that, and, and, and commit that they'll be healed. And I have faith that that will happen. And that's exactly what took place. And, and apparently the centurion knew what most people in that time did not know. And that is that Jesus was the Messiah. He was the son of God and savior of the world. And that knowledge led to the deep faith and trust that Jesus would do what he said he was going to do. So for us, 
if you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, if you believe that he's the son of God and savior of the world, that he came in person, that he died on a cross for our sins and rose three days later, and if you said, hey, I'm going to follow Jesus with my life and commit to that, then are you letting that belief and that faith in him turn into trust that Jesus is going to say, or, or that he's going to do what he says he's going to do? Do you have that level of faith and trust that Jesus will do what he's promised? Do you have that trust to say, hey, I'm going to trust in your instructions. I'm going to follow your commandments even when they don't make sense. I'm going to respond to your invitation and call in my life. And I'm going to trust that if you say something, it is true and it will come to pass. Because that's what we see in the centurion, this deep faith where he said, you don't even need to come to my house. Just say the word and from a distance, I believe my servant will be healed. And that is exactly what happened. So today I pray that you would take your belief in Jesus and allow that to convert to deep trust and faith in his very words. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.